Uma Faken, before I get into the meat of this video, I want to uh, thank everyone for their contributions. Um, some of you, you know, every little bit helped, but some of you contributed as much as like a hundred bucks. And when, you know, when I saw, you know, some, some of those contributions, and again, even a dollar helped. But when I saw how deep some of you dug into your pockets, uh, I was, you know, I was just overwhelmed, as was uh, my wife, Nasiba T. Hill. So I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for your contributions. I want to tell you that at least we got at least 30 pairs of MMA gloves and mouthpieces. We got several books, GED books, for, for some of the, uh, the former felons who, who were trying to get into a better programs, uh, more uh, into apprenticeships in, count, in county colleges. Um, uh, what else? I'm not going to send out, I'm not going to send out a, a group email thanking you guys. I'm not going to do that, all right? Guys and gals, maybe, you know, I, I, I don't know, but mostly guys, right? Uh, I'm not going to send out a group email. I don't think that's the thing to do. I'm going to contact all of you separately, right, personally, and address you personally, all right? Those of you whose monikers I remember, I'm going to address you by different comments that you made and things of that nature, and I think that's only fitting. So I thank you. I also want to say none of your contributions go into our pockets, all right? Many of these people we teach for free. The people studying for their GED, I teach for free, as do the other, my, four, my, other, my four partners. Um, the people, who's, the kids whose MMA gloves we got and mouthpieces we got, most of them I teach for free. At the very most, their parents pay maybe 30 bucks a month, and that's if they have it. If they don't have it, what am I going to do? Tell the kid he can't train? Ain't going to happen. Right. So I thank you. God bless you all. Even if you don't believe in God, yeah, hopefully he'll throw you something and throw something your way also. All right. Um, now, there are people who have asked me what people, what fighters do I study? OK. What boxers do I study? Uh, the comment went something like this. Uh, safe. And I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, safe. I know you are a student, longtime student of boxing. He did say that. Um, can you tell me what fighters you personally have studied in your time, right? Okay. Let me say this. For a lot of the young guys studying fighters today, I want to say this. Most of what you are doing is you are studying fighters that you like and not studying fighters that you have something in common with when it comes down to your boxing style or your personality, all right? People that I have studied are different than people that I liked as people. I'm going to give you an example. And this example may surprise a lot of you. From the time I was about 11 to the time I was 17, I was close to average height, close to average weight for my height. Okay? Um, I didn't have to look up at a lot of people in the ring. Uh, maybe people at the most might be two inches taller, maybe three inches tall at the most, right? Given our our similarities in weight, all right. Now again, that was that was sport. Of course, in the street, you don't have that 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 uh, novelty. You don't have that privilege of being evenly matched. But you know, in the ring, I was fairly evenly matched. When I was eighteen or so, I became a subcontractor, made good money, I left the gym. Okay. Knew I wasn't going to turn pro, left the gym. I missed the gym wars, came back when I was about uh, 20, all right? Left when I was 18, came back when I was about 20, right? Now, when I came back, I wasn't fat, but I no longer had to cut weight. I no longer had to worry about my weight. So now, when I returned to the gym, I was 5'7", and I weighed about 175, between 175 and 180 pounds, of muscle. Okay. Now I have to change my style. Why? Because from 11 to around 17, I'm boxing similar to uh, Danny Garcia. Okay. Uh, very basic, um, not exceptionally fast, a uh, high guard, 
waiting for people to make mistakes, heavy-handed, yeah, heavy-handed. If I caught you, I hurt you, all right, but very basic. Not the best style for fighting tall people. When I get back to the gym, I'm five foot seven, and I'm a cruiserweight, light heavyweight cruiserweight. The trainer is not going to let me spar on a regular basis with people who are 147 pounds, 154 pounds, even though they're, some of them are even taller than I am. I have to spar on a regular basis. When people are available, I have to spar light heavyweights and cruiserweights. These guys are 6'1", these guys are 6'2". The first time I get in the ring with a guy that's a cruiserweight, he's a winner of the novice Golden Gloves, he makes it to the finals in the open class Golden Gloves. The guy can punch. He's 6'1", all solid muscle. 190 pounds, solid muscle. Okay? I'm 5'7", 180, solid, but I'm 5'7". I'm trying to box him in my standard position. Now, I have a decent defense, but I can't get inside. My offense is gone. Why? Because boxing in this way was not conducive to fighting someone that was that much taller than myself. I go home and I realize that I have to find a model to model myself after because I need to alter my style or just don't go to the gym anymore. I was just, I was just, I wasn't taking a great deal of punishment because I had a defense, but I couldn't get my offense off. Muhammad Ali at that time, was my favorite fighter. My favorite fighter, by far. But I couldn't study Muhammad Ali. I couldn't study Muhammad Ali because Muhammad Ali, through his whole career, was either above of above average height for a heavyweight or average height for a heavyweight. When he retired, he was still average height for a heavyweight. He was not small for a heavyweight by any stretch of the imagination. I could not study him. So I had to figure out who I could study. This is before James Tony. This is before a great deal of fighters. There's only one man, one man who I studied. I studied film after film after film of this man, and I studied three fights. Three of his fights watched hundreds of hours of how he beat these people, right? The man that I studied, that I had to study, or else get my head taken off, and just leave the gym, right, was Rocky Marciano. Rocky Marciano is the only fighter at that time that I actually could look at and learn enough from to alter my style. Now, Ali was my favorite person, okay? He was my favorite fighter at the time, but Rocky Marciano was the one I had to look at to learn something from based on the fact that I was at a physical disadvantage as he was at a physical disadvantage. And not only did I study Rocky Marciano, but I only studied three fights. Three, not three fights, but three of his opponents. Him with three of his opponents. That's it. Him against three opponents. That's it. Him against Ezra Charles. Why? Because Ezra Charles was bigger and faster. How did he handle this man's speed when he was slower? I studied him in Jersey Joe Wolcott. Why? Because Jersey Joe Wolcott was very slick. So how did he not get caught so many times that he would get stopped against Jersey Joe Wolcott? Because after all, people say Rocky Marshall didn't have a great defense, right? So I had to study, I had to look and see how come he didn't get caught so much by a heavy-handed slick trickster like Jersey Joe Wolcott how did he beat him? And then Archie Moore, the old mongoose, one of the slickest fighters that ever lived. How was he able to beat Archie Moore? So I studied Rocky Marciano. That's it. No other fighter. I studied Rocky Marciano. Was he my favorite person? I didn't even know who he was. Didn't know much about him. But style-wise, I studied him. And I only studied him against three opponents. The Cincinnati Cobra. Jersey Joe, uh, 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 Ezra Charles, Jersey Joe Wolcott, okay, and the old mongoose, Archie Moore. Those three. So I had to study how he bladed his body. When he would come in, he would come in like this, how he bladed his body. How he worked his way in. How he came in behind his jab. How he backed out by, he, by him throwing, throwing a punch 
and then lowering his center of gravity to back out to not withstand a great deal of punishment. I actually became somewhat of an expert on Rocky Marciano. Now, there are some people that will say, oh, man, everybody knows about, about Rocky Marciano. Well, not really. Even Rocky Marciano's biggest fans underestimate his, de his defensive ability. Most people say he was a defensive liability, and he wasn't. Rocky Marciano could not be a fighter without any defense and still beat good fighters, no matter how old they were when he fought them, and still beat fighters like Ezra Charles, Jersey Joe Wolcott, and Archie Moore. Because even when he fought them, although they might have been past their prime, they were still good. Okay? So, Ali, favorite fighter. Fighter I study, Rocky Marciano. I have to say that he is the fighter that I studied most when I was boxing. Now I've studied fighters after that. But while I was fighting, while I was boxing after the age of 20 and going into the gyms in order to keep my head on tight, in order to preserve my brain cells and be able to count my change when I went to the store, I had to look not at Muhammad Ali, but Rocky Marciano. Why? Because Rocky Marciano was facing the same disadvantages that I was facing. Today, three out of every five young black guys and three probably out of every five young Hispanics box like Floyd Mayweather. And yet you only have one. Floyd Mayweather. Most of these guys, when they fight a fighter who is putting the pressure on, they end up losing. Why? Because Floyd is more than a Philly shell. Much more than a Philly shell. Much more than a shoulder roll. So my advice to you youngsters, my advice to anyone who is boxing, if you want to model yourself after or take some things from a particular fighter, do not do it based on your personal preference for them, based on their personality or what you think about them. You have to find a fighter who fits your facticity, who fits your body type, who fits the style that you are boxing from, and then take them and model your style based on them. Of course, not completely, but get your pointers from them, as I did from Rocky Marciano, although Muhammad Ali was my favorite fighter at the time. We will fight camp, save Carmen, train hard, train smart. See you next video. God willing. And again, all of you who donated will hear from me uh, separately uh, with a personalized uh, thank you, in the form of a personalized thank you. A lot of programs coming your way. I will be announcing these programs. Some of them are top secret, but a lot of programs coming your way that you're going to like. All right, Uma Fight Camp, Save Carmen, Train Hard, Train Smart. See you next video.